Good afternoon. Ah, technically, it's still good morning. Uh, Sunday afternoon here. We are going to go combine some wheat. We're going to plant some double crop beans. Let's get that done and uh, see how we do today. So just kind of getting here and getting ready to go. Got Rylan tagging along today. And uh, we got to get the combine out, get it fueled up and ready to go for the last uh, 78 acres here that we've got at Walgreens. New pump works. First time using the hose reel on the combine. You got a new hose and a new hose? Yeah, it is. Okay, we got her filled up and we are headed to the field to get started. Alright, we're hooked up getting some endros done here. I should have filmed it, but I didn't right there. I was having trouble. My uh, center draper belt, the one that feeds into the feeder house. Every time I hook the head up and start it for the first time, it doesn't want to go. It doesn't turn. And then sometimes when you let the head down, it starts going. This time it took forever. I don't know what was going on. I switched speeds on the gearbox, went from the high speed to the low speed to see if that would make it go or something. I, it, it didn't at first, and then it eventually did go, and I don't know why. I know at one point, the one of the engineers from John Deere that helped design the center feed section of this head was watching my videos. So if you're still watching, tell me what I'm doing wrong. Draper speed adjust problem, but my belts are moving. I don't understand. <sighs> Something's not right. All right, Dad jumped in the combine. He's going to run that. Rylan's going to ride with him, I guess. Here comes Phil in a truck. For no reason at all yet, but that's okay. Brock's going to run cart. I'm going to go plant beans. I did get all the software updates done to the displays in both tractor and combine and uh, our cameras are still not working and our machine sync still doesn't seem to be working and I'm freaking ticked. That's ridiculous that we can't make this stuff work and now we're gonna be halfway through harvest before they even come out again. It's just absolutely ridiculous the amount of money we pay for stuff for it to not work. It really ticks me off. Let's go plant some double crop beans. We, um, we got to stop down at the seed warehouse, fill up some seed. What is that? Why is that doing that? Dip lock's on. Why is the dip lock on? Um, yeah, we got to go fill up some seed. I have some paper bags of some treated beans that I want to get used up so I don't have to worry about returning them. Uh, so that is uh, priority number one. I believe there's about 90 bags, but we'll have to go and count. Oh, they might be in two different varieties. Uh, crap. We'll go see what we got down there and figure out what I'm going to use up and what I'm not. But we're going to throw those in first, and then we'll plant the rest with untreated seed. We'll talk about that later. Let's just go and get loaded up. So we've got our uh, Midland in here from when we used to use this as a grain cart tractor. It's still, it's still there. And I uh, just heard Brock and Dad talking on the radio. Brock thinks he's got our machine sink figured out, so maybe it is working. Just hadn't established a connection yet when I was there. I don't know, but that's a good sign. Okay, I believe this row here is all the treated beans that I have. Oh, those are treated too. These are treated 2922s, 2818s, 2922s. What about these? Are these treated? 2818s treated. Dang. Okay, so we got two different varieties, which I don't really want to mix. We're going to do some and then do the other ones. What do I have more of? Looks like the two eights. So we're going to start there. Both of those are right in the wheelhouse of what we should be planting for double crop. Um, yeah. I know we've talked about uh, soybean maturity stuff a little bit in the past, relative maturity and how that works, but uh, right here we plant anywhere from a 2.2 to, I will go as late as a 3.5 um, for our spring planted normal beans, right? 2.2 uh, is really early, a lot of guys won't plant that early. Uh, three five is pushing it to the late side. The sweet spot for us is probably two seven to three one, three two somewhere in there. Um, the so what you need to know about that is that the smaller the number, the earlier they're going to mature. Now the uh, theory with planting later in double crop beans is that you don't necessarily want to plant an earlier maturing bean. Um, so you want to go with something kind of in the middle to the later fuller season side of that. Now I won't plant a three three or a three five 
for double crops because they'll never mature for us. Uh, they would get frosted off. But I also won't plant a 2.5 or a, even a 2.7 is pushing it to the too early side. So uh, 2.9 to 3.1 is my ideal. The 2.8 will be fine. Uh, so we're going we're gonna to plant those out. And then all the rest of these over here are untreated paper bags. I've got some 2.5s. We won't use those. I've got some more of the 2.8s. 2.8s. 2 eights. looks like that's what we're going to use then so uh and then i do have some boxes we won't need that many if i needed them we could use them but we won't so anyway uh let's get those thrown in oh, i really don't want to throw all those other bags on the planter so we'll probably just get them brought to us or something i don't know it'll be fine we'll just use them up let's get them done have i ever told you guys how much bags suck oh my goodness they suck even more when it's July and it's hot out. Uh, 46, that's all I put in there, 46. That's all we got of that variety. We'll clean up our mess and we'll plant. These are the days where we get tar all over our equipment from the roads. I'm trying to go a little slow, but only so much I can do. We're just getting started here. Good news, the balers are bailing, so they've got, I don't know, they had like 15 or 16 windrows to do uh, when they started, and they're bailing and bundling already, so they should get done before we get to them. We got a screwdriver. Yeah. We got to do a little digging. I don't have my seat digger with me because it's not planting season. Um, make sure our depth and everything is right. And... Then we hammer down. Ooh, pretty shallow there. Ooh, pretty shallow there. That one was better. You can see we got moisture. Uh, better, but still a little shallow. Under my down pressure. We need to crank up the down pressure would be my guess. So one little trick to tell if your down pressure is good or not on your planter is to come over to your gauge wheels while the planter's in the ground and see if you can spin them. And you should be able to spin them just a little bit. This is a little too easy. So we need to, we need to put more air in our down pressure airbags, push those down into the ground. That'll keep our depth a little more consistent. Double cropping. Good to go here. Planter's a little small, a little small compared to my corn planter, but that's okay. We're good. Um, this is double crop beans. So I've often said this before, okay? When, uh, when we are getting started planting in the beginning of the year, we have April planting speed, we have May planting speed, and we have June planting speed. And what I mean by that is the later it gets, the faster you're willing to go to get the crop in the ground. Well, we're in July. So... Where in April I might not push this planter over five miles an hour, it's July. We're going six and a half, which is, a lot of people would just do that anyway with this, especially beans, because it's beans. The only thing that gives me a little bit of pause from doing that or going a little faster is that we are planting a very high rate. So my meters are spinning really fast because they are got to put a lot of seed out. Uh, the reason we're doing that is because they're, they're double crop beans. It's July 9th today. The later you get, the less time these beans have to grow. The less time they have to grow means the less time they have to get to canopy, to put nodes on, to uh, have places to set flowers and therefore pods. And so we need more plants in order to get more nodes, in order to get more sunlight capture, all of those things. Uh, so the later you go, the higher the population that you plant. So where in the spring, when we first start planting, we may start at 150 or 160,000 or like in my 30 inch rows I'll go all the way down to uh, 120,000 um, now we're dropping 210 200 plus is good I've done up to 240 before seed cost gets outrageous there these beans are not free that we put in so uh, we're going to go at 210 and um, we'll go and see how that works so that's what we're doing. I will talk more about double crop, what it is, why we're doing it, the economics behind it a little bit. Uh, as we go, I just want to make sure everything's going to be working right first here. Okay, let's get out and see how it's doing now that we've got our 
down pressure adjusted a little bit better. Made a couple rounds. Come out here and do some more digging. Alright, here's a row. I like it better already. Right there. Oh yeah. Those are going to work. We don't need them overly deep because we've got moisture. They should grow pretty quickly. Now, we just dug this row. There's one right in this wheat stubble row, which is not ideal. But that's what happens when you mix 10 and 15 inch spacings. You're going to get some overlap. So some of those aren't going to be real deep. Just pounding them in there is sort of difficult. But they are there. And then this one's right in the middle again. And those look good. And then that one's right there, right on it. Dang, right on it. It's gotta be right on it, doesn't it? Yep. I don't know if I could shift over like three inches and they would get sort of just offset on them. Or not, but yeah, there's a bean. Oh well. They'll be okay. So there is a little bit of moisture in this ground. That's one of the requirements to plant double crop beans is there has to be enough moisture to get them to grow. I think we have enough to get them started, but it's not a lot of excess. Like we could use some rain. Fortunately, Wednesday through Saturday, there's chances of rain every day. So we should get some, get these things going. Okay, we are still planting here. Uh, but the baling guys, the balers are about done. They're still bundling, they're gonna start stacking and other stuff later. But I brought the drone, and I thought we could get some footage of me planting and them baling and bundling and all that in the same field. The neighbors are halfway across this field over here, combining wheat. I was really hoping they would be out there so that I could film them combining and me planting and the balers baling over there all at the same time. Uh, but they're not working today, or at least not yet. So um, we'll get what we can now before the balers are out of here, and maybe we'll put it up again later. But getting uh getting the drone set up all right i um still got the drone in the air but we've gotten a bunch of footage both the bailers the baron the bean planter uh my wife called me in the middle of that and uh she was just happened to be driving past the field where we're at and so i said hey i need a ride back so i can go get, so I can go get some more seed we've got uh 27 acres planted we should be able to do like 32 so we're yeah we're about out of seed anyway and uh, that's gonna work out good. So we're gonna go back, grab a truck and that other seat, and get the drone down here before the battery dies on it. And um, we will uh, be back to keep planting. All right, we got some more beans. Probably not enough still to finish, but that's the rest of the treated ones. And then we'll know how many more we'll need to get the rest of that field done. So we will come back here and Either load up paper bags, or if it's close enough, maybe we'll take a box, because that would be way easier. We are going to plant out what is in those seed tanks. I should level them off. Ah, eh, we're not that critical. Um, there's not much. I think maybe we can do these front ends here. I did, I did the half on that side of the driveway. I didn't do this side. So I think we'll try and plant those, and we'll see from there. Okay, see all this green stuff? That is mare's tail, and there is a bunch of it out here. And that's not good. So we need to uh, we need to spray that sooner rather than later. Starting to run out. All we gotta do is make it to the driveway. Get a little thin in that spot. It'll be okay. All right. More bags. Blah. There's 40 on this. Uh, these two pallets. 20 on each. So, I didn't look to see how many acres we covered, but we got to be close. Oh, we're loaded. Brutal. Bags are brutal. Okay. 40 more units. Let's plant until they're gone. We got to change the variety in the monitor. And we'll get going, and then we are going to have a chat about the economics of double crop beans. All right, 
we were playing, I got my GoPro so I can mount you on that rail and not have to hold the camera because you're going to have to listen to me talk for a little while. Maybe I should overlay the drone footage with my voiceover of me talking. Whatever, we'll see. Uh, anyway, let's talk about double crop beans. Let's talk about the economics of them and let's talk about, um, well, first of all, what are double crop beans, right? So some of you may not be familiar with that term. Other of you may not realize that some people don't plant double crop beans, right? So um, double crop just refers to the fact that it is planted after we have harvested a main crop for the year already. So in this particular field, we grew winter wheat that, this year. That's, that was the crop. That was what we grew, planted. That's where we intended to make our money. We um, are now planting a second crop in the same calendar year trying to double dip, if you will, and, uh, and get a second uh, you know, crop off of the same acres within one calendar year. Um, the farther south you go, the more prevalent this is. Up here in the north, northern Ohio and Michigan, some years it works, some years it doesn't. The farther north you go, I would say if you get 50 miles north of here, they don't ever try and double crop. Maybe a few guys, but. Uh, even around here, there are guys that will never do it, just don't think that there's enough potential there. So it's very hit and miss for us. Like I said, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. I have had double crop beans go in the 40s. I have had double crop beans that we never even harvested because they didn't grow or didn't produce beans. So you never really know. It's kind of a gamble, but uh, if, if you can get 20 plus bushel, it's worth something. So that's what double crop beans are. So let's talk about the economics of it. Obviously, we've already harvested a wheat crop. We were going to do that regardless, so we're going to leave the wheat crop totally out of it. Same thing with the straw. We were going to do that whether we double crop or not, so that doesn't factor into this. We need to purely look at what are our costs just to plant the double crop beans, what would our cost be if we didn't plant double crop beans, and what is the potential benefit of doing it? What is our potential income, right? So let's start there. Let's start with the potential income. Let me uh, let me pull up something on my phone here while I'm talking. So it is July 9th. We are pushing the very tail end of the soybean planting window. Very tail end, okay? Um, I would say after July 10th, it's not worth trying it. I'm not saying they won't produce beans after planted after July 10th, but the chances and the likelihood go way down. I was really hoping that we would be planting by July 4th this year. And that may not seem like a big deal, you know, less than a week, but it can make a huge difference when you're this late in the calendar year. So I don't have a ton of optimism for the beans we're planting right now, but it's it's still worth the chance. Um, so this late, I would say our best case scenario is probably 30 to 35 bushel beans. Uh, had we planted them a week ago, I would say 40 is possible. I would say the chances of them being 50 bushel double crop beans uh, is about 2%, maybe. I've never seen it. 1%. It's, it's not going to happen. Uh, the chances of 40 bushel double crop, maybe 10%. 30, yeah, we're probably talking 25, 30% chance of that. And then, you know, they, they ought to make 20 pretty easily. And 20 bushel will still pay. But let's, let's use best case scenario I'll say 40 just for the math and then we'll say 20 because it's easy half right um, so right now I could sell soybeans for fall delivery right soybeans fall delivery right now for 12.68 a bushel okay so let's do some math 12.68 times 40 would be $500 an acre in income just over $500 at 20 you're at 250 okay that's easy math so what are our expenses going to be well the big one is seed cost what we're doing right now so we have to buy this seed and yes there is a slight discount on it for being double crop versus uh first crop you know if we would have bought them in the spring to plant they would have cost more now they're trying to get rid of seed so uh, they sell it to us a little bit cheaper um, I don't have a firm cost on exactly what these are costing me, but I'm going to guess, I'm going to guess a bag is still going to be $50. 
probably at least that for these treated ones. They may be even a little more than that. But let's go with $50 a bag. Now we're planting heavy. We're heavy, heavy seeding rate at 210,000. That's actually 1.42 bags per acre. So we take 50 times 1.42, that's $71 an acre in seeding cost. Okay, that's the big one, seeding cost. Now, driving this tractor and planter across the field, it's not free. I couldn't exactly off the top of my head tell you what that cost is. Obviously, we're burning some fuel. We are, uh, you know, they're, they're paying me to be in here. Of course, I would be doing something else if, even if I wasn't, so I don't know if you count that or not, but um, uh, there is a labor component to it, and then there's some wear and depreciation. Now, if I look up custom farming rates, and we use those numbers, because we're estimating conservatively here, so we'll be on the high side of our costs, uh, they would charge about $20 an acre to plant beans. $20 an acre, let's go with that. Add that to our 71, oh, we'll say 19, because it makes the math easier. We're up to 90 bucks an acre in cost, okay? What other variable cost do we have for planting this crop? Well, if we're gonna harvest them, we gotta harvest them, we gotta pay for that. So again, you go to the custom farming rates for harvesting soybeans, and uh, that rate is around $35 an acre, okay? Let's add 35 to our 90, and we're up to 125 bucks an acre in cost. What else? Well, you could make the argument that there's pulling some fertility out, and um, I, I would agree with that, except for we aren't really gonna fertilize any different. Uh, we aren't gonna add anything extra for the double crop beans, you know, now, and we aren't gonna put any extra chicken litter on here this fall after we harvest the double crop beans. So we're really living on soil reserves here and it's a pretty minimal impact. So we're not gonna count any fertility stuff. Uh, and if we don't harvest these soybeans, they actually have a little bit of a fertility benefit to the ground and act as a cover crop when we work them under and then plant corn here next year, they'll give a little nitrogen kick. So it's kind of a wash. We're gonna call that a, a net zero. All right, uh, the next thing that may be sort of different would be chemicals. Now, we have a ton of mare's tail growing out here. We're gonna have a ton of volunteer wheat growing out here in a matter of a month or a few weeks. So that's something that we may have to address. Would we have to do that if we didn't plant the double crop beans? Yeah, we sure would. So does that matter? Is that an expense that we have with, you know, is it, is it a variable cost to the double crop beans? No, it's not. The only thing you could say is that we may have to make two applications now, one now for the mare's tail, one later for the double crop, uh, for the volunteer wheat versus mowing these mare's tail off now with a, a mower or in a few weeks and delaying that and then coming back later this fall and spraying everything off in one pass and uh, ripping it up and, and being done. So I am going to say that the difference in chemical cost is also negligible. I have a row that's not working right. We gotta go fix it. I'm not getting any seed out to row one. I'm like my hose is plugged, so I took the end off here. And uh, I don't know if you guys can see down there. Hold on. Can you see in there? Negative. Turn the light on. See that tab? That's a problem. Well, how do I get it out? I don't know what to do about that, really. It's kind of stuck in there. I can't open that bottom door because all the beans will come out and I'll never get it closed. So I kind of used the screwdriver and jammed it in there and tried to push it off to the side because it's the last one. So if I get it on the edge, it might not plug stuff up. But if it keeps working and happening, I'm going to have to just have a skip row until we get the tanks empty so that I can get in there and dig it out. But there's too many beans for me to push them out of the way and dig it out of there until they're emptier. Good thing it's double crop. Okay, so where were we at? We were going through expenses. We were up to 125 bucks an acre. We're not gonna count chemical expenses. We're not gonna count fertilizer expenses because those we're gonna have either way. Tillage. We aren't doing any tillage any different here. We're no-tilling the double crop beans. 
and uh, we're going to disc rip it when we're done in the fall, which we would do ahead of the corn crop next year, whether we put beans here or not. So that doesn't change anything either. And then, uh, you know, land cost, right? So the thing is, we have to pay the rent or we own this farm, so we have to factor cost of ownership, however you want to look at it. Technically, it is rent, uh, regardless of whether we plant these double crop beans or not. And so that's not really something we add in either. So all told, at the most, using custom farming rates, we're going to have $125 an acre invested into this crop. Now, if you take out the equipment side of it, direct expenses, it's C. That's it. It's C. So we're 70 bucks an acre there, plus cost to run a tractor, a planter, in the combine. It's not that much. And when we go back to the income side of it, we're looking at, you know, hopefully worst case scenario, 20 bushel beans is 225 bucks an acre. We're still making $100 an acre doing this. We're going to plant about 85 acres of beans out here times 100 bucks. That's $8,500. Well, that's not nothing, right? It's something. And uh, if they go 40, which is absolute best case scenario, and I doubt they will do that, uh, then we make $500 an acre minus our 125, means a 375 net per acre. And uh, 375 times 85 would be almost 32,000. So the potential benefit is there, right? That's worth it. Um, now, there is the, the actual worst case scenario where it's dry the rest of the summer and these beans just don't grow and we actually don't harvest them. So then what are we out? Well, we're out the seed cost and the planting cost, but not the harvest cost because we won't run the combine over it in that case. And so then you're out 90 bucks an acre. They said there's a little bit of cover crop. Benefit. Oh yeah, that's something else that we forgot. We did not seed clover as a cover crop on this field because we knew it was our double crop potential. And so I'd have to go back and look up on exactly how much our um, uh, clover seed was. Let me see, I can probably find this real fast. 250 a pound times, we spread it at six. So 2.5 times six is 15. So there's $15 an acre in cost savings that you can take right off of that 90 gets you back down to 75 bucks an acre um, that's worth it it's worth the chance so that's why we're double cropping these now why we don't do more one there it is still a risk right but every other field that we have potential to double crop uh, we have something else going on or it's just it's just too small to worry about like we have a we have a 15 or an 18 acre field that we could potentially double crop the one dad combined the other night it's five miles away and it's not worth it to go up there for 18, we'll call it 20 acres to try and make a thousand dollars on it, two thousand dollars. It's just not enough potential there. Um, another field we're going to tile. The stuff in Berkey is too far away. I've talked about this in the other videos on why we're only going to do this one field. So that's the economics and why we're doing that. And I hope that makes sense. And uh, yeah, let me know if you have any questions. Now, enjoy some shots of the bean planter working because this is. You know about the only time we've run a bean planter this year that little bit one day after they fixed this tractor and now so yeah all good well this is fun it's nice it's easy it's kind of relaxing there's not much to go wrong i have not had any more issues with that uh, one row plugging up so i must have got it shoved off to the side enough at least that the beans are still flowing through there so it occurs to me that i probably should have planted these on a little bit of an angle so we don't always have that row getting pushed into the wheat stubble eh, too late now not gonna worry about it um but that that would have been a good idea from the beginning so oh well uh what else oh we're about out of seed again when you can start to see it there below that bar the light that means you're about out so we can probably make one or two more rounds but we're almost up to their bales anyway and uh uh, ben, my buddy that kind of runs this operation, he's in the Baron over there. And he said when he gets all of them bundled, he's going to go get a truck and start getting them out of here. And he is apparently done or on the last little tiny bit because I don't see any more small square bales setting over there. So he's got them all bundled up and just uh, going to go talk to his guy doing the stacking over there. And then I expect to see a semi-truck show up. 
So we're going to go back and uh, probably get some beans. Although if dad has done combining, we might move some equipment to Berkey and then I'll come back and finish this later because it's going to take them a little while to get all these uh, loaded up. They're going to have four or five semi loads, I would assume. Okay, we're uh, basically out of seed. That didn't quite run empty, but I can't even see any in the tank, so we're going to call it empty. 56 acres done. We need to do some math. Uh, well, there's 30 left in the field. We aren't going to quite plant 30. Um, but we'll do some math on how much I need to do that. If I can just use a box and come pretty close, we're just going to use a box. So uh, we're going to take all our empty bags back and figure out what we need for seed, get it around. Go check on dad uh rylan's been with him all afternoon and he just called me and said he's he's hanging in there but he's getting tired or whatever so uh, we might go get him and take him home all right i got stuff cleaned up and by cleaned up i mean thrown on a pile um here's where we're at so i did some math to do 30 acres at 100 at 210,000, we need like 42 units i could take 40 paper bags over there or we can take a box and put it on tenders. So we're gonna do that because it's a whole heck of a lot easier. I don't have to worry about the bags. Uh, tenders easy to get out. So, um, and it gives me another opportunity to do something. So, uh, obviously we've been planting treated beans. Now there is a. It's it's questionable whether the treatment actually pays in uh, July now because treatments typically protect soybean seedlings uh, from diseases. Now there are diseases that will attack when it is hot and wet or maybe even hot and dry, but the more prevalent ones that we are concerned about happen in cool, wet soils. Uh, and so, it's not a huge issue, and the beans are gonna grow so fast that uh, they'll outgrow most of those pathogens anyway. So I don't necessarily need treated beans. I am not going to treat any more of these beans. We use double crop and replant to use up treated beans that we already have around. That's why I used up those paper bags. Uh, however, I am going to run this box of beans through the treater because I want to flush the lines. I want to be able to run it with just straight water in it and get rid of the chemical that's say it in the lines and stuff. Like I, it's it's empty because we finished with it empty, but I'd never ran water through to flush everything and help clean it out a little bit before we start getting ready to treat wheat later in the uh, later in the summer here or the fall. So. Uh, we're going to go ahead and do that, get everything set up to, and get some water and just, like I said, flush water through everything. All right, well, that kind of worked. Uh, those beans stayed a lot redder than I thought they would. Now, that's not full treatment. They're definitely not covered well or they're light. Um, but there was more red in those lines that just kept flushing out. So it's good. Good thing we did that. Uh, we need to give the treater a pretty thorough cleaning before we get into wheat get any caked on treatment build up anything like that off which there is some it's not horrible i did clean it out during the year a couple of times but uh yeah so now we need a uh, seed tender but we're gonna go check on the harvest operations and see how things are going down there first oh you know what we need to do first check on our orange corn i missed it yesterday we didn't get to look at it because i wasn't here i left at like two o'clock and never came back to look or it was dark by the time i got back so let's check on that while we're here so this will be two days since the last time you guys have seen an update and uh we're on day five six i think it's five but we could be at six i don't know today's sunday did i do that on monday i think i might have done that on monday look at this Here's our plant. You can barely tell that it's the one that we painted. Uh, we've gotten one, well, maybe just one new leaf collar, but look at how much new leaf growth we have. I mean, this is where this would have been tight into the whirl when we painted it right there. It is killing that outside leaf tissue. It just grew fast enough to get past it. This was the last little leaf that was just spiking up would have been like this one unbelievable amount of growth we've got lots of elongation in the bottom nodes girth it's kind of peeling open it's it's that's that's impressive so we're not quite to a week yet but i would say we're going to hit doubled in size in a week six today is day six yep they're almost done 
Finishing up clear back here in the point. Just a little bit in the point here to finish up. Walk around on the outside, we can get some decent footage. We've got the super good wheat here. There's that though. Yeah. Look at our clover. That looks fantastic. Look green along this edge. I think this field's been a little wetter, which we kind of knew it would be. This was some of the last, this was the last planted field here at Waldron. And um, then we went to Berkey. Plus, this is a fuller season variety than the other stuff has been. But sounds like it's yielding really well. Not here, obviously, but the rest of the field. We've been debating about uh, making a trip to Berkey, whether it's time to move tonight or not. Just found an oil leak on our grain cart though. My hose is blown, it's rather serious. So uh, that will kind of dictate that that's not going tonight. We gotta get that fixed in the morning. Uh, not a big deal, but it's a hydraulic hose about 18 inches long, but the crimp is broken on one end. So it's leaking all over. Uh, we may take trucks, combine something. I don't know yet, we'll figure it out. It's just a little hose. It goes from right there to right there. I got it off on the bench. It had been leaking a little bit, but it couldn't have been long because it was a big leak when we uh, started it up. Whatever, yeah. Uh, the ones on the tracks, you can do more, but the bearings on the cart are just a couple. This hose crimp was bad. All right, so we're gonna fix that hose in the morning. Brock is greasing giving our tracks and everything a shot of grease. Um, we're making plans for moving. Dad's gonna head out now with the head and a pickup. Phil and I are both gonna take trucks, semi-trucks, and we're gonna have Brock bring this truck with the Boss, the fuel trailer. All right, we are loading the Boss up. Fuel and death for the trip to Berkey because we're gonna need both of these things down there with the combine and the cart. Especially since we're not bringing it back before bean harvest. So load her up. So I timed our new pump to see how fast it is. Because it has this little 35 gallons a minute thing on there. Well, those are lies. Total lies. According to this, when I time a minute, we get 17 gallons. That's pathetic. That's a 50% loss just due to the hose. And I get it. You're not going to get rated capacity. But it seems like 25 ought to be pretty doable. I don't know. That's why I thought maybe we should go with a higher capacity pump, but you almost have to upgrade all of this stuff to inch and a half or inch and a quarter at least to be able to, to utilize that capacity. And Whatever. It's still better because the 20 gallon a minute pump probably only puts out 10. So, you know, this is better than that. That's almost 70 gallons of death. That's probably enough. I'm sure that's plenty. Like, the tractor won't even need any while we're down there. Combine will probably a couple of times, but that's like 25 gallons. Yeah, that's probably enough. Okay, Brock's out of here with the fuel trailer. Phil left with the Volvo. Dad's out in his way with the head. We're taking the Cascadia and heading to Berkey. I have no idea where we left this video off. It could have been when I was leaving for Berkey. Anyway, we took the trucks down and stuff. You gotta be real close. Real, 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 real close. And we came back and now we're here to finish planting beans. And Brock's bringing me down because we got a box and he's we're gonna empty it and then he's gonna take my truck back and I'm gonna plant and then we're gonna take the tractor back. This video's long enough, I don't need filler, but look at the sunset. So we gotta, you know, gotta get that picture. I should go back there or back over there and take the picture. That's why I, I remembered to get it. Ah, that'll plug your tubes up. Time to go. We should have enough beans to finish this, or at least to do what we want to do. So, we go. The 
Balin guys are almost done and out of here. He, um, he's got one full load here, I know, and then maybe a partial of another one. So we may have to plant around a few bales if he doesn't come back before we get to him. But for the most part, uh, <clears throat> they got it all out of here. So that is a good deal. Well, dang, he's going to get them all. Cool. Just in time. <laughs> Two more there, and they'll fit right on the back of that trailer. Oh, this is fun. I stopped the chat. He's strapping a load down and going to head out. Thanking him for getting stuff done timely. I appreciate it. Well, neither the grain cart guys, the baler guys, the guys picking up bales did their job and run over this skip that I had here with the head. So hopefully the planter mashes those down so people aren't making fun of me for skipping that with the combine. Um, we've got one more pass to make. Yes, I'm aware, I'm stopped. You don't have to tell me you're not planting. We've got one more pass to make, plus get to the end of the field here. But we're starting to run out of seed! Which is actually good, it's perfect. We may be a little uneven because we had to split that box. So I'm gonna check it and see if we need to move some beans from one hopper to the other. Yeah. Empty, not empty, bucket. All right, we evened them up. We may or may not make it, but we are close enough. Just starting to run out, and we're done. I'm happy with that. There's still just a few beans in there, not very much. So um, that is all the double crop beans. However, I also have I also have just a few bags of uh, some leftover plot seed that is uh, extend flex instead of enlist. And I didn't want to plant them out here because one, they're mixed maturities, which not the end of the world, but because they wouldn't um, live after I sprayed these mares tail out here with Enlist to kill them. And so um, my plan is to throw all those bags in and plant them out in the first field that we combined. Um, but we're gonna tile that field so there's about a 0% chance of me actually harvesting them. We'll just consider them a double crop and get rid of the seed more than anything. So, um, so we're not quite done with the planter, but we are done planting double crop beans. All right, guys, that's it for me. We got the uh, double crop beans done. We've got the wheat done here at Waldron. We are moving to Berkey halfway through that move, and uh, everything is going pretty well. The wheat has overall been better than expected which is a pleasant surprise. I now have raised my expectations and I expect the wheat at Berkey to be very good. So we'll see when we get there tomorrow. Um, but yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna get stuff moved. Um, we gotta fix that hose on that green cart first thing in the morning and then we go to Berkey and combine. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. All the good stuff. Have a good night.